Good evening and welcome to the first Strawberry Patch of 2016. I'm Carol Long and with me this evening is our first Vice President and also the Director of the upcoming Queen Teen Pageant this weekend, February the 20th. This is Teresa Key. And we're here to bring you some news and some special things that are going to be happening soon with the 75th West Virginia Strawberry Festival, and the theme is Diamond Jubilee. And what a jubilee it's going to be. Absolutely. Can you <laughs> believe it's actually here? It's not very far. Just a few days, it seems like. <laughs> Just a couple days away. Yeah. Well, I can tell you I'm really excited for the pageant this weekend. Um, I have 13 wonderful contestants in the Queen's Division. We have six girls, and Carol, they are the cream of the crop. Oh, the pictures were lovely. And in the teen, there are six girls that I haven't even heard of. So I'm really anxious to see what they bring to the pageant world and what they bring to festival. So I'm really excited. Oh, well, we couldn't put these programs together if we didn't have sponsors. So I've got That's to right. talk about the sponsor. And we welcome back Tenor Donato. They've been with us now for oh a number of years ever since we started so I want to give a plug for uh, Tenerton Auto and they're located right here in Tenerton and if you have um, have a need for your car to be repaired or if you have a problem and you need to be towed or you just need to have your car inspected give Tenerton Auto a call and uh, they will be very happy to have you in their business. Their phone number is 472-2174, and that's Mr. and Mrs. Jeffries at Tenerton Auto, and we thank them for joining us for this 75th celebration. Absolutely. Now, let's, let's get on with what's going to happen. Give us the information. If folks are watching out there, what date do they need to put on their calendar for this weekend, and what time? Well, uh, we're at the Buchanan Upshur High School this Saturday, and at 5.30 is when we'll actually have the opening um, of the evening, mm -hmm. and that's when we're going to announce our king-elect for this 75th festival. Mm -hmm. And I know who it is, but I'm not telling I you. don't. Um, I don't get to know a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> it's a surprise. And um, we'll announce the spirit winner, and we'll announce our hostess princesses, and we're going to talk about a special campaign that we are going to be launching this mm -hmm. weekend. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let you talk about that, and then we'll talk okay. about the pageant. Okay, I'm going to hold up a picture here. And this all started with Mel Hager. And if anybody knows Mel Hager, he is a doer and a shaker, and he gets things done, let me tell you. He's a go-getter. He said... Um, we need to do a membership campaign for the Strawberry Festival. Now, it's starting this year, but it will continue. He has gone, let me see if I can hold this up. Let's do it this way. Uh, he has gone to the Work Adjustment Center, and you see these strawberries. There are going to be two, and they're four by four wooden strawberries, and you will see them about town. Let's see if I can get the glare. There. There. Uh, you'll see them either in the chamber office. You might see them located in one of the banks. Wherever these strawberries are located, you can go to that location and you can purchase a ticket. Let you hold this. The ticket is going to look like this. It'll be green. And for $25, <laughs> we'll get the right... For $25, you can be a member of the West Virginia Strawberry Festival. And then uh, it runs until the 31st of December, and you will get a notice in the mail that your dues will be ready for 2017. Now, the neat thing about this is, once you purchase this ticket, along with this that you see in nice big, they're going to be nice like four by four and they're going to be wooden and they'll have their stands and everything. And by the way, they were painted by uh, Patty and Roy Wager. So we want to thank them and we want to thank also um, the folks who made them and that's the Work Adjustment right. Center. And especially a thank you to Mel because he worked on the tickets. We have a thousand tickets. And we're hoping to sell several of them because all these dollars will be used for festival events this year to keep things moving. Now, also, there's going to be something special. I don't have all of the information on that yet, but once you buy this ticket, there's a stub. And this stub, you need to make sure the person that sells you the ticket takes your stub and puts it in a box because that stub will be used for a drawing festival week. 
and we have a really nice surprise that's going to be given away festival week i don't think you have to be present to win but anyway you've got to buy one of these green tickets in order to do that and i want to also put a plug in for uh, melody stemple because melody is still working with her friends of the festival campaign and she will take uh starting with $25 all the way up to thousands if you want to do it or if you want to uh, give something to the festival and you don't have a lot of money and you'd like to have a name signature there's going to be another size strawberry like this that once you buy these you can put your name on it you can sign it or if you don't feel like you can afford the ticket for the membership for five dollars you can sign your name so we've just got all kinds of available things for you to become involved personally with the strawberry festival and it helps everybody because every one of these events has some price tag to it Absolutely. And we're going to have a really good uh, parade this year, and that's not going to be inexpensive. No. We'll talk about it later, but all the dollars that you donate go to purchase supplies, go to purchase event uh, tickets, for example. We have to pay for tickets. We have to pay for a lot of things that we're doing. So uh, we just want to make sure that you're aware that we are going to be doing this membership campaign, and it begins on February the 20th at your pageant. Yes. I'm really excited. I am too. I am. I'm, I'm just real excited to see these berries. They're going to be on site. Yes. And I think Mel has already got the others made that you can sign. Oh, awesome. So just if, if you're not sure, I, I will be up there for ticket sales for the pageant. How much are your pageants? Pageant tickets are $10 and we'll have programs available for five. Okay. And we're only printing a lim limited number of programs. Okay. So they're pretty too. They're very pretty. I was really pleased with how the layout went and how nicely it yeah. looks. Yeah. But well, we're, we're ready, I think. We are ready. Um, the pageant itself will start at 6 p.m. And I feel very, very fortunate um, to announce that Miss West Virginia USA 2016 Nicole Green and the 2016 West Virginia Association of Fairs and Festivals newly crowned queen Emily Lopez are going to be emceeing Oh, that's going to be exciting. Our pageant. So <laughs> it should be interesting, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Uh, Nicole was actually our queen yes. just a couple of years yes. ago and she's going on to um, rain at another local fair uh, in Fairmont, Three Rivers, mm -hmm. and then she won the Miss West Virginia crown in October. So I feel very fortunate to have two very strong ladies in And they know the about the, pa about oh, the festival, and that's, that's important too. Yes. And I think that's a, a good experience for any of our girls that do become uh, hostess princesses, who become teen and queen uh, well, not only contestants, but they win the pageant right. and they become our teen and, and queen representative for the Strawberry Festival. Now, we know that the teen is crowned on uh, Saturday, Saturday night, night. Yes. but what happens to the queen? Well, the queen gets to try on her crown for just a few minutes for official <laughs> photos and uh, then we take it away and then she is crowned at coronation. So her title Saturday night will be queen-elect. Yeah. As will the kings. He will not be crowned until coronation. But he will be announced. Uh, and how do they select the king? Well, they have to grow berries, <clears throat> and then they put their names in through um, the West Virginia Extension mm -hmm. Service, and then they are picked. It's how many berries they grow and the, proce the procedure in which they grow those berries. True. So um, so they have to be involved with strawberry growing in absolutely. order to put their name in the hat, so to speak. And it also, does it not have something to do with the quantity of berries? It, it's the number of plants mm -hmm. that they uh, have to have in order. And I'm not sure what that number is. I'm not is. sure either, but I know that there has to be some production and yes. there's a quantity. Now, we also are giving a Spirit Award win, uh, yeah, winner, winner or something. So can you tell us of, not who it is? Won't but, tell you who it but is. But what, uh, what kind of criteria is there for choosing? Well, the Spirit winner is traditionally, it's someone who has given so much time to the festival, whether that time being spent staking parade route, 
making copies, uh, just being there when something needs to be done, you know, it takes the entire community to pull off this mm -hmm. festival. That's true. And I don't think people realize <clears throat> what effort goes into pulling off this festival for the community mm -hmm. and um, so the spirit winner is very deserving of this award um, this person has pulled floats to parades this person has attended pageants this person has unloaded the trailer and don't set give it away now i'm not going <laughs> to give it away because that could be several because we have a lot of folks that are deserving every year very deserving and, uh, so uh, I think this person has worked really hard for the Don't festival. give it away. I won't give it away. <laughs> but, uh, you know, as the ones in the past, we've had some really nice uh, award winners mm -hmm. that have given a lot of their time and energy to the festival. And most of the time, they're never on the board. Right. Well, just like Jessie Marsh. Yeah. Last year's spirit winner, um, her son Randy Sanders, you know, produced this pageant many years ago and has gone on and he produces pageants for five states mm -hmm. and you know he's with the West Virginia Association of Fairs and Festivals and you know so his mom winning the spirit winner last year was truly touching yes and she also has made many many years has made all the banners that you see the on sashes our, that the mm -hmm. girls wear yeah um, when I first came on the board and everybody was talking about the Jesse Marsh sashes mm -hmm. you know it wasn't until i really took a good hard look at one of them sashes how much work she put into mm -hmm. one of those sashes she used to design all of the uh, gowns that were worn for the coronation wow when we had lots of the princesses mm -hmm. come back so she designed and she made those for the girls and jesse's been involved with festival for years so that's another like i said another person that uh she was you don't never know on about. the board right, right. but yet she was very deserving of mm -hmm. that spirit right. winner last year well we could talk about each one of them and have have oh, won the award and absolutely they were just really very deserving of phenomenal mm -hmm. now we still have one more thing to talk about and that's the hostess prince how are they selected? Well, the hostess princesses who will be with the girls all week and they'll help at the pageant this weekend, they have to be at least a uh, freshman in college, 19 years of age, and a resident of Upshur County. And um, they send in an application and we choose two mm -hmm. girls mm -hmm. uh, who we think would best represent what we're looking for um, and first first choice for those are folks that are associated with the festival yes because their families cannot enter pageants right um, that's something that we you know trying to keep everything above board you know we don't allow uh, board members kids grandchildren uh, etc to be involved in the pageants mm -hmm. anymore so um, I think that that is being above above right. board and and they do have criteria yes and they do have applications and they do have resumes and all that so we try to do our best to select a couple or there are two this year two and we we usually have two we've had one we've had three mm -hmm. just depending uh on uh, the amount of girls that we have absolutely so um, those things are all going to be announced on Saturday night. Starting at 5 30. At 5 30. So yeah. you can, tickets can be purchased at 5. Yeah, the, we'll start selling tickets at 5 and the doors to the auditorium will open, you know, as soon as we mm -hmm. start selling mm -hmm. tickets. But um, the president, Charlena, will start, you know, the opening ceremony part of that evening mm -hmm. at 5 30. Okay. And uh, you want to tell us a little bit about what happens the next day at the high school? Yes, um, that is the Junior Royalty Pageant, and Kelly White has uh, spearheaded that project this year. She has 33 contestants, I do believe. And ranging, they're always full of spirit. Oh, <laughs> the three to four-year-old age group, wow, <laughs> that's interesting. Um, you know, and that's one of the biggest age groups, mm -hmm. and they're the hardest to corral, I will tell you. They're, they're a lot of fun on stage, too. I've seen some that find out that people will laugh at the way they move mm -hmm. or the way they smile <laughs> or something they say. They'll just stay there. We've had to go off, off onto the stage and, and say, come on, your time will be, you know, after a while, we got to go off now. <laughs> but they just love to be entertaining for the folks. Yes, they do. And, they're, you know, it's, it's fun to watch. You know, a lot of people have bad... Um, 
have bad feelings towards pageantry, but you know, as a whole, pageantry teaches young ladies how to speak in front of a crowd. Um, you know, it wasn't until I was 40 years old that I felt comfortable speaking in front of a crowd, and if someone would have told me 16 years ago that I would be sitting here talking to you on TV, I would have laughed in their face, but here I sit. Well, we all learn. Yes, There was we do. a time when I wouldn't speak to anybody unless they spoke to me first because I was so shy. So, and look you know, at us now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'd like to get rid of us pretty soon. I don't know. You never know. <laughs> well, Be careful I, what you wish for. <laughs> I do think that uh, this is a nice weekend coming up, and, and we just urge people to come out for an evening of, oh, of entertainment and of beauty. beauty, yes, and pageantry. And uh, we have we have some really neat, neat things that are going to be happening this weekend. And come get your tickets for the pageant, and while you're there, get a, a membership ticket and put your name in the hat name in the hat for i'm not going to tell you the prize uh it's about 99 percent sure and we should we might know by this weekend but right. i'm not sure yet so i don't want to speak what it is but it's going to be a really nice one that we're going to give away and some lucky person who buys a membership ticket is going to win that prize um what are some of the other things that we can talk about as far as festival things? We uh, we have uh, this pageant, and then the next thing, is, do we have anything between now and the very first of no, May? No, the very first thing that will happen in May is coronation. No, there's something supposed Opening to, ceremony. No. Mm. <laughs> I think we're going to have an archery tournament on May the 7th. Awesome. Um, we don't know all the details, but uh, it'll be here in Upshur County, and that's the date set for that. Probably at the middle school. I'm not sure awesome. yet. Awesome. But yeah, archery is becoming very, very competitive. And I have, it's a great yeah, sport. I have two granddaughters that, that do that. Awesome. So, um, and they really enjoy it. So that, I think Mr. Warner is supposed to do that. And then we do have the weekend of the of the festival beginning, which is uh, May, March the 14th. May the 14th. I said March, didn't I? May the 14th. <laughs> Maybe we have something March, too. I'm not sure. <laughs> if there is, I don't know okay. about it. <laughs> but May the 14th through the 22nd are festival dates. And on the 14th, what are we going to have? Well, we're going to have our opening ceremonies at the Courthouse Plaza and then at Two o'clock, I believe, mm -hmm. is coronation, and coronation will be at Wesleyan in the chapel. And uh, depending on who our queen is, depending on the color of her hair, will depend on what color dress we get. Because I won't put a red dress on a redhead. That so. makes sense. <laughs> but uh, I thought it'd be something with diamonds all over it well, because this is it, our diamond jubilee. It's going to be sparkly. Okay. It's going to have sparkles on it, I promise. <laughs> now, there's some special guests that are invited to come for this particular coronation. Yes. Um, uh, the, uh, the governor of West Virginia, Earl Ray Tomlin, has been invited. I'm not sure if he's confirmed. Okay. 100% mm -hmm. yet or not, and the Department of Agriculture uh, Commissioner, Walt Helmick, will be here to crown the king. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's really exciting that, you know, a small town can have this caliber of government, you know, mm -hmm. come and, mm -hmm. you know, that's special for and our we usually we usually have um, our senators and our House delegates and right. those folks who come, and they may be here. They may be here for that. They may be here for the parade. We're not sure yet. It's right. a little early for all of this. But um, it is February. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the other guests that I understand are coming back are our past kings and queens and presidents and hostess, any, anybody that's participated in the last 75 years, if they're able to be here. We'd love uh, to have yeah. you. And so it's going to be a special day for folks to get together. And we're going to have a reception following the coronation. And it's in a different location this year. It's going to be in the social hall. In the social hall. Which is in the campus center. It's okay. upstairs, but there's an elevator. Okay. Um, I think that happens to be the weekend for graduation or prom. I'm not sure what, but there's something going on in the downstairs at French C. So we're going to be upstairs in the social hall, which will be sort of glamorous anyway. Well, yes. <laughs> so that's the first day, and that's on Saturday. Now, on Saturday evening at 5 o'clock, 
is the Horse and Carriage Parade. Yes. So we want to invite everybody to come out for that. Uh, it's going to be fun. And if you haven't taken the opportunity to come to town to see the Horse and Carriage Parade, it's really, really beautiful. I mean, the... Oh, it had grown a lot last year. I was really surprised at how many people, you know, how many riders and wagons and horses we had last mm -hmm. year. It was really, really nice. And I think maybe in the Grand Feature Parade there's to be one or two winners from the past that are going to be bringing their carriages oh, or nice. um, stagecoaches or whatever. So that's going to be neat. Um, so that's the first day. And the second day, there's been a change. We're going to be having the gospel sing on uh, May the 15th. And the location will be different. As of right now, it's planned for the uh, Virginia Law Center for the mm -hmm. Arts. And that's on uh, College Avenue. Um, most of you will remember the, the art. Uh, we call it the Art Center, you know. But uh, Ron Pugh and Ed Crawford are going to be working with the gospel sing. And they're going to have some nice groups. I don't know their names yet. But uh, that will be from 2 to 4 on um, May the 15th. I don't know why I'm thinking March. And I am I guess I'm getting a little antsy because it's close to March. <laughs> and we have a lot to do before May. Uh, but anyway, on uh, May the 15th is the gospel sing. And we're still looking at the possibility of a few other things that's well, going to be going on. I think that that's the weekend of the uh Either the mini horse show or the no, horse it's pull. It's the horse pull, and it's at one o'clock at the Bennett Farm. Yes, and if you've not gone to watch that, that is really entertaining. Mm -hmm. I took the girls, <coughs> um, the queens, last year to uh, watch the horse pull, and they really got into it, cheering on the horses. <laughs> it was fun. Well, that takes care of the first two days of the beginning of our 75th Diamond Jubilee. We have a lot more things that we're going to be talking about in the next few weeks. Um, we also want to put a, a plug out for sponsorships. If you have not been asked to be a sponsor for the festival, we'll take $50. We'll take Fifty thousand. <laughs> I would. I'd like to have fifty thousand dollars. We we will take uh, your donation for various sponsorships. If you have a particular event you're interested in, and I also want to put in a plug for TV3. Um, they're going to be filming just about every event this year for the West Virginia Strawberry Festival. The Grand Feature Parade will be done by WDTV, and that will be uh, for the Grand Feature Parade, which is the following Saturday on the. 21st. That's going to be a big parade, so you want to make plans to come to that. But if you do have a few extra dollars and you can buy a membership or you can be a sponsor for that, uh, we would appreciate any donations and volunteerism if Absolutely. you have, have some hours you want to give. And one more plug I'll put in, and that is for um, maybe you were a princess, or maybe you were a little flower girl, or maybe you had something special that you did with one of the festivals, or maybe your grandmother or your mother did. And anything that you would like to share in the festival windows, our downtown business store windows are going to have memorabilia from the past and some special things. Uh, Vera, uh, LaVera Gillum is working on that. And if you have something, you can call the festival office at 304-472-9036. Um, we have a new website that's that's coming up very soon. I don't know if it's online it's not, yet. It's not live. It's not live yet, but it will be shortly. And Carol, I want to make a make a statement. You know, she said it takes a lot of sponsorships to make the festival go, mm -hmm. and you know, the festival brings on average, you know about a hundred thousand people mm -hmm, in and mm -hmm. out of Buchanan that mm -hmm. week. If everybody that comes to the festival would donate one dollar, one dollar. That would really be a big blessing. That would be a huge blessing to the festival because you know it's the same businesses year after mm -hmm. year after year that donate money and and you know it takes everybody you know and well when you have a budget that's over a hundred thousand dollars it over a hundred and fifty well yeah I didn't let's say that but it's that's not a lot no it's at least a hundred and fifty or more 
And so, and especially <laughs> this year because right. it's, it's our the 75th. 75th. So we want some special things going on, but we really do want to share some of your memories. I'm working on the two festival windows that where our where office is across from the uh, courthouse, and I've got a few things in there. Um, I just got something from Evelyn Tonkin this week. She was a princess in 1949, oh, wow. and she is going to let us put her dance card. That they had a princess's ball oh, wow. that year, and so she has a little strawberry with a pencil attached to it. And I even saw she had some names in there that she danced with. Mm -hmm. So Evelyn, I'm sorry I told that, but <laughs> <laughs> but we have some other things in there, and I would love to have pictures. I'd love to have mementos. We would like to have dresses and outfits. Um, anything special that you'd like to share with us, just make sure you have them tagged so we can make sure you get them back. But those are some of the things to get us started. Um, the excitement is starting to build, I think, and with the pageant this weekend, that's going to be really special. Yeah. And I know it's been uh, it's been a chore, but also a blessing, and you've enjoyed doing it. I have um, enjoyed. You know, I took over midstream. Yes, you and did. And it's hard to pick up somebody else's reins and keep going, but I've done it. I'm proud of myself, and I think it's going to be absolutely beautiful. And it'll be even more special if you come. So absolutely, it's, it starts at seven or six, six o'clock. But five thirty, you want to be there to get your tickets at five and get seated to see who these winners are for some of the things that we're going to the be announcing. Spirit winner and right, uh, the right. king and the hostess princess. And again, we would use sponsors if you have a. a, a and you would like to sponsor, say, a strawberry patch. If you'd let me know, Carol Long, 304-472-2191. I'd be most happy to talk to you about it. Uh, we want to make sure we get all the information out that we possibly can get out about the Strawberry Festival for our Diamond Jubilee. So uh, we are glad you joined us this evening, and we certainly thank Tenerton Auto for their support behind the strawberry patch for several years and again this year and we'll use some other sponsors with the strawberry patch as well because we hope to do about 11 of them wow so we'll see you next week thank on you, the Carol. strawberry patch thank you teresa and good luck this weekend thank you we'll see you next week have a nice evening